Our first one, or your first one you've got here, is Houston minus three and a half versus Denver. Yeah, I mean, your initial reaction is, ooh, three and a half. Like that that hook, that could be a painful hook. Counterpoint to that, Houston's good, Denver's not. You think right Houston's now, Den- I, well, I think Houston's going to win the game by a lot. I think Houston's going to win the game by more than a touchdown. Denver right now is surviving on something that I believe to be not sustainable, which is turnover margin. So let me give you the games they've played this year, and or not this year, but the turnover situation. So on this winning streak, they have turned the ball over a total of three times. Credit to them, credit to Russ. Not turning the ball over, not throwing picks, not fumbling like he was. They had no turnovers in their first win against Green Bay. One against the Chiefs. One against Buffalo. None against Minnesota. One against Cleveland. On the flip side, they have forced this many turnovers on this winning streak. One against Green Bay. Five against the Chiefs. Four against the Bills. Three against the Vikings. Three against the Browns. So on this five-game winning streak, They are plus 12 in the giveaway takeaway. Forced 15 allowed three or committed three. That is not going to sustain against C.J. Stroud, who one of the things he's done the best this year is take care of the football. So you have that going. You have the fact that Denver wants to play a low-scoring defensive game. You know what Houston wants to do? Air that sucker out. You add to it uh, that uh, the Texans this week, this isn't really a betting note, but it's just interesting. With a win this week, they hit their pre- their over for their preseason win total, which was set at 6.5. And, and I understand C.J. Stroud is 0-4 as a favorite. I think Denver right now is wildly overvalued. I think Denver is going to end up being a seven or eight win team, even as they sit here at six and five. Denver at Houston, at the Chargers, at the Lions, their next three. It feels like three straight losses. This feels to me like a 28 13 Houston win. I'm laying the three and a half, DeMonte. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't feel super strongly about I I'd stay away from this game if I were um, okay. a square better, but I'm a sharp one. So uh, wait, I think you got that backwards. Go I ahead. Did, next, I did, I did get it backwards. No, Tampa Bay just... minus five and a half versus Carolina. <laughs> and evidently that that line's moved to five. Uh, so the Bucks obviously are in a bit of a tailspin. They've lost what six of seven after starting three and one. That part's not good. And there is the slight concern of Carolina getting the new coach bounce. But I am here to tell you, this Carolina Panthers team is painfully bad on offense. <laughs> and I'm not I'm not trying to uh I don't take any happiness or joy or pride in in Bryce's struggles. I the I might not even be the, Bryce's I, see, fault at this point is what it looks like. It's, eh, I mean it's not all his fault, but And I don't want to sound like a broken record or like an old man on old NFL scout. The guy's too small. He can't see the middle of the field. He has trouble seeing over his offensive linemen. He is not accessing the part, all parts of the field to make throws, which makes this team incredibly easy to defend. You add to it. They don't have any great receivers. You add to it. They don't have a great offensive line and you have a team that has scored the following points this season. 10, 17, 27, shout out. 13, 24, 21. Oh, okay. The offense was okay to start the year. Since then, 15, 13, 13, 10, 10. Tampa Bay is in an absolute gotta have it, must win spot. They are very alive for the division. I think Baker has played pretty decent I think this past week he got hurt fought through it came back in and this just honestly feels like a 17-10 or 21-10 Tampa win 
You don't love laying five points with a bad team, and Tampa's a bad team, but Carolina's the worst team in football, and they just fired their coach, and there is your mom is here now trying to make me laugh, distracting me from this very just fired their you know, coach. important game. So sometimes you get the new coach bounce. So mm-hmm. you, we saw it last year. The Broncos got it temporarily after firing Hackett. The Raiders got it after firing yeah. Josh McDaniel. Uh, but that's when a coach, the Josh McDaniel thing was the players hated him. Right. I don't think the players hated Frank Reich. I think the players, if anything, see Frank Reich not even get 11 games or get 11 games as the head coach and is worried. Everyone's worried. This just feels like a Tampa spot. All right, next. Uh, Tennessee plus one and a half versus in versus the Colts. All right. My, listen, Mike Vrabel is a dog. I understand the Titans prior to their recent win had lost like 14 of 17 games. Uh, the Titans this year are four and two against the spread in games with a uh, spread of three or less. The I like Will Levis. I don't love Will Levis, but I like Will Levis. The Colts are going to be without Jonathan Taylor. I'm getting the to me the Titans and the Colts. The Colts are better at full strength, but they're not at full strength. Jonathan Taylor's gone. Tennessee's going to try to muck this up. I'm, it's a divisional game. I'm getting a home dog with the better coach. So it just checks too many boxes as far as sharp betting. Better coach, home dog, better quarterback, divisional game. Give me the points. Uh, and so Gardner Minshew, 9-11 against the spread of the last 20 starts. That's not that bad, actually. But I'll take the home dog in Vrabel. And I think the, right now, when you look at the NFL playoff picture, this is not a sharp betting note. It's just the truth. When you look at the NFL playoff picture of both conferences, there is one thing that stands out that you're like, that that's not right. The Colts are a playoff team. Of course they're not. Come on now. Of course they're not. And they're not, even though they are right now, because they're going to lose this game. Give me the Titans plus a point and a half. Next. All right. Uh, you got Philly plus three versus San Francisco. Yeah. So this is, this is very simple. I absolutely, Demonze, can see San Francisco winning this game. I absolutely could see the Niners picking apart that bad Eagles secondary if they can't get home. If they can't get a pass rush on Purdy, Purdy will probably cook in this game. I can absolutely see uh, the Chiefs were able to run on Philly. Christian and Nobody's been able to run on Philly other than Kansas City. Christian McCaffrey's great back. I could see him running on Philly. Philly has been playing with fire the last month and a half. You know what I mean? Almost daring a team to beat them, and no one's been able to do it. So all of that is a case to take San Francisco. However, you have a 10-1 healthy team at home, and I'm getting a full field goal. That is just on gambling fundamentals. This is a must-pick Philly. Uh, It's just a blind bet. A 10-1 in the Super Bowl era. There has never been a team, 10-1 and one or better, at home with its healthy starting quarterback getting three points or more. It's never happened. The only times it has happened is when a team is resting starters in week 17 because they've clinched the bye, and so that's not their real team. Also, uh, Eagles 8-2-1 and one against the spread this season. Jalen Hurts in his career as Eagles quarterback at home, 17-6-1. Brock Purdy is a covering machine at home. On the road, he's 4-5 and five against the spread. Uh, and I just, I, I am not going to put a ton of money on this, but it is just the right side to be on. The Eagles get it. I thought when this game happened, I do the... The same thing Bill Simmons and Cousin Sal do, the guess the lines thing. I do it by myself, essentially, every uh, Sunday night when the game, when the Sunday night football game ends. I look at the slate. I open my gambling app. I cover up the point spreads with one hand and just look at the games and then scroll. To, I guess the line and scroll. I was five and a half points off. I thought it was going to be Philly by two and a half. 
it was the Niners by, well, at the time I wasn't five and a half points off because it was the Niners by two, but now it's the Niners by three. I Philly plus three is a must. It's just a must. All right, next. Yeah, uh, Kansas City minus six at Green Bay. Yeah, I think the Chiefs are going to win by more than a touchdown. I Listen, Jordan Love, credit to, and they are on extra rest, are the Packers, so that's good for them. They're at home. That's good for them. The Chiefs started cooking again last week. The Packers are a decent team. The Chiefs understand that if they want to guarantee they get the one seed, they have to win out. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to get more from the show and make sure to click the bell to get notified every time new content drops. Check out full episodes of What's Right wherever you get your podcasts or just click the link in the description below.